So this lovely looking thing with the nice glowing Nixie tube is the Chaos Divider from Cylon Labs. We've got the CD Sputnik Expander, which we'll look at later in the video. And this is essentially a clock divider with different modes, different things you can CV. So first, let's go through the different modes. We start on zero, which is odd numbers. And I'll zoom into a picture just so you can see these. And I'll let you just listen to this for a while. This sound is my divide one. And this is divide by one, so it's my clock input. I have these beats mixed with it. So that's odd numbers. Going into mode one, this is ones. So divide one, divide two, divide three, divide four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You get the picture. And these are just triggering these different sounds that you can hear. And then go to divide by two. So divide two, four, six, eight, and so on. This is then freeze. Pause. And as we get into these higher division numbers, I'm just going to speed the clock up. Divide by fives. This is binary division. Number sevens based on the Fibonacci sequence. Eight is the chaos mode, which is just gonna trigger everything to start with, but I'll move some of the other knobs we're gonna look at later, just so you can hear how this is different. And nine is prime numbers. Go back to number one. Just slow this back down. So the intensity knob will rotate through the outputs. The interval knob will move through the division table. So if we've got divide one to nine, we could go divide two to 10 or three to 11. And there's some great images in the manual to show you this. So I'll pull these up on screen as well. You've essentially got a long lookup table of the may go in twos or ones or whatever mode we're in. Let's say twos, you've got divide two, four, six. As we go through that, that might become four, six, eight, six, eight, ten, eight, ten, twelve. You're slowing down and going further down this division table. Right back around.
around to the start. So we can move through the table, rotate the out. And this is going to give us a different sound in each of the modes. Let's speed up. We have a reset input, we have clock input on the bottom, the interval and intensity CVs, and these knobs become attenuators for CV when they're plugged in. We've got our reset and we've got CV for the mode. The reset's also on a button, and this will hold and stop while reset's held. Great for big unison fills where you want everything to reset and all hit together at the start again. We can have normal or inverted operation. When this is inverted, the outputs are literally inverted. Where the gates were on, they're now off and vice versa. So the reset's gonna behave a little differently as well. The gate length can be accessed by the CD Sputnik. We've got clock or frequency based division modes. We have a split mode. And that split mode literally mirrors between outputs four and five. These become the same and these become the same and these as we work on. If you're using ADSRs and things dependent on gate length, this inversion or normal operation would have a big difference, as would the gate control on the CD Sputnik. So we'll check that out in another patch. So in this patch, I've got a sequencer playing a simple three note C minor arpeggio. The sequencer's clock is coming into my clock in, as is the reset. So when I stop my sequencer, I can reset and I'll be in time. Let's start that again. two divisions triggering two VCAs, rather gating two envelopes to open up two VCAs with two oscillators just tuned to the root and the fifth for this arpeggio. So let's just go through these modes again, the interval and the intensity and here how we can change this. I'm going to go up to a faster set of divisions. Now this is set to be gates as the output on the CD Sputnik Expander and these are envelopes that have their sustain set full with a tiny bit of release. So as I pull down the gate time, notice I'm just getting these short little clicks. Anything with a sustain portion or anything that looks at gate length is where this is going to come in handy. the looping envelope so we're getting some short clicks some that are open longer depending on what this cv signal is so in this patch i'm going to check out the cv of a mode interval and intensity i've got a kick drum and a clap and snare combo that's been triggered by an external sequencer so that rhythm's not going to change i'm taking the first divide output to be my hi-hat sound and if i take this out this is the beat 
on the clock and the reset coming from the sequencer, so everything's going to be in time when I press play. This sound that I unplugged is a little bass. Little filter envelope, simple little bass hit. Now, as we've seen, the different modes are going to give us a different sound. As we're rotating the outs, or going further through that divide table, But if I add some CV, and this is just random step CV that's happening every 16 beats, so every one bar of this beat that you can hear, this is going to change. These are now attenuators. And this is the beat rotation. We can see that LED is now what was beat one. hear the hi-hat change and the bass change. That's because this is rotating these outputs. If I was to leave that out, leave it back where it was, we could instead CV through that division table, that lookup table for the dividing. Again we need to turn this up, it's an attenuator now. both the higher and the bass change. And use that reset like a fill again. Now let's CV both intensity and interval. So we've got rotation and pushing through this division table. Turn these up. One of these is a 16 step long random step sequence. The other's eight. So halfway through the bar, one of them will change a full bar, the other will change. Just going to turn the bass sound up. CV the mode instead. Got the nice visual indication on that mixer tube. So let's check out the chaos mode. We've covered the other features and the controls, bits of CV, what the expander does. And when we select the chaos mode, the chaos divider starts with all ones, all divide by ones, everything fires. And if I send my clock signal into the module, and actually go in to mode eight, chaos. Just gonna pull the clock out. You can see everything fires. Depending on the settings of the intensity control and the CV, and the interval control and the CV, the values across this division table will change. And while it's not literally a chaos algorithm, the intensity and intervals can be considered the initial conditions for this chaotic behavior. And we'll call this a sort of reactive probability. That's how the manual describes it. Um, the reactive probability is more than just randomly triggered output pulses. There's one random seed that's generated when the module first powers up. And the seed is used one time to select which output is first selected as the lead output. The input clock pulses enter the chaos divider and the selected number of pulses have then been counted for that lead output. The chaos divider then determines new divisions for those outputs and passes the lead output duties to the output above it. From there, this routine continues, and this is this reactive probability, random, chaotic, random triggers. The manual says, and I quote, seriously, this evolves over time and does all kinds of crazy stuff. Have fun with it and let it roll. So let's check it out. Here's the clock signal back in. I'm gonna move these knobs. And let's leave it for a minute.
some of the settings. So you get these chaotic random triggers or random gates that you can fire out to control anything in your system. Envelopes, drums, trigger samples, step forward through sequences, using this to divide down different melodic sequences and play your sequences in different times works great as well. Another way we can use a divider, especially one with several outputs like this and one that you can see V, because it's where it gets really interesting, is to create melodies and sequences. I have just one output going into a mixer and then a mixer going into my quantizer. Every time my quantizer changes, it triggers my envelope. So with this mixer level down for this one output, we're not getting anything. But listen as I turn it up. I'm going to keep turning this up. I'm going to stay there on a minor third. The gate output, when it goes high, it's triggering the high value that's set by my mixer channel level, where this is going. And when it goes low again, we're getting back down to the bass note. Changing its gate length, will take that out of time and give us a quicker drop back down because that gate length's now not lasting as long. With this full, it's a 50-50 gate length. Let's mix in some other values. So this is just going to another mixer channel. Obviously when they both hit, they sum, it's a higher value, it's giving us a higher pitch note. So we can hear by mixing these different outputs, creating a sequence. Let's try the chaos mode. And those little flurries and sort of glitches are from the quantizer, not from the chaos divider. When it's perfectly in between two notes, it's going to sort of glitch down onto one or the other. Lots to play around with and a way of sort of creating sequences not fully defined by the user in terms of putting every single note in. Hit like and subscribe for more videos every week and check out the other Chaos Divider Beats first jam video on screen. Check out the Patreon link if you want to support my channel and cheers for watching.